this is part three where I'm going to be focusing on the couple. I said I would do two parts, but actually I'm I'm doing three parts because I I've noticed that y'all don't watch something you don't like watching something that's more than twenty minutes. Um, so instead of posting it as one hour or one hour fifteen minutes, I would just rather post it as as three parts of twenty minutes each so that you know you can watch it in increments that are palatable to take. So the couple. Um, by the way, if you have not subscribed and you keep coming back and watching, I want to say first of all, I appreciate you for watching, but please consider subscribing down below and hit that notification bell and select to be notified for every time that I do post a video here on the channel so that you don't miss out on anything that I do post. I'm not doing any vlogs right now. I'm not doing any other videos right now. I'm really resting because it's been a tough year, but I'm, I've committed to doing these particular thoughts after the Iyala Fix My Life show. So that's what I'll be doing. And there's a lot of playlists that you have not seen yet. So you can watch and catch up on those before I start putting new content out, um, either later on this year or in the new year that is literally around the corner anyway so the couple um so it, i mean it comes out obviously that, that jamil is verbally and emotionally abused by um by mark and jamil is kind of coming into an awareness about what she has been demonstrating to her girl children and how you know for me i would say how crypt hypocritical it has been kids don't d don't respect hypocrisy in parents you know you can't say don't do as I do do only as I say you know um, that's hypocrisy so um, it comes out that you know Jamil has been verbally and emotionally abused and um, this has been demonstrated to her children and, you know, I would say about this, this makes, you know, them hypocrites, the parents hypo hypocrites, because you can't say to, to kids, do as I say, not as I do. You know, you can be teaching your children, I let myself be abused, but don't you let yourself be abused. It's like your children lose um, respect for you when you do that, when you are a hypocrite with your rules, when you say, um, I'm creating these rules for you so that you can... Um, have this kind of life but I don't have to live by those rules and I can do the opposite and model something completely opposite in my actions your children don't have respect for that they absolutely don't have respect for that and what comes up again with um, Mark and Jamil is that you know he was too busy providing and convincing himself it was enough but she tells him look from the beginning of our relationship I told you even if we were living in a box as long as we had love and cherishing and just we're down for each other and we ride or die for each other, that's what I wanted. And and yeah, it doesn't mean you, you want to be poor in a box with someone, but you, you don't want that to be the main priority, you know. And she was just saying for her it was enough that they would be in good relationship with each other and that she wasn't there for, okay, we, we want money and we want things in this relationship. And so Jamil says she has no capacity to support Mark any longer. And this is how much you can tell she's afraid of him. She says she needs him to let her go. She doesn't say, I don't feel like I have the capacity to stay in this marriage, nor support you in whatever change you're trying to make because he wrote the letter. And so I need you to, I, I'm, I'm leaving this marriage. No, she says, let me go. Like, will you please let me go? Um, so, somewhere in this conversation comes up. So this this kind of leads to a revelation of, oh, okay. Divorce and talks of divorce have happened um, in this with between this couple, and Mark, though, had convinced I will say, Mark had convinced Jamil um, to come into a silent agreement before coming to the Iyanla show that you know. Um, there would be no mention of this part of their relationship that there had been talks about divorce and that um, that is something that was that had occurred as part of this you know relationship with their children and so Mark feels very betrayed and says well, we we agreed 
you know and i'm like no y'all didn't agree you told jamil we're not gonna talk about this part we're gonna omit this part we're gonna get help for everything else this other part we're gonna deal with it on our own or we're not gonna deal with it at all and i mark am going to pretend as if you don't want to leave and you don't want out you know but she brings it up and so he's very upset about this but this is what tells me that mark controls the environment in his house but not in a good way in a toxic way in an overbearing way in a way where he's a bully because um you cannot come into a healing process and um, and choose particularly yana van zandt's um, healing process and choose which information you want to present and which information you want to omit you're not going to get the help that you need um, from the root out if you omit what is wrong it's like if you go to the doctor and there's particularly and you're saying i'm having this sickness and you have a, a clear idea of where the sickness comes from but you omit something very key that would lead that would help the healing process or the prescription what needs to be prescribed and you omit it then you're still not going to get help for the wound the the infestation might diminish with whatever you get given but from the root out you're not going to get the proper help if you omit certain things you cannot come into a healing process and control how it goes and control what you're going to tell and what you're not going to tell how far you're going to go and how far you're not going to go you can't you can't unless unless you don't want to heal completely so this is what tells me that mark is literally very much a controlling guy in his home and he controls the environment in his home to convince your wife you've written to go to a healing process but you're like oh oh no but we're going to omit this part no oh no not this part it doesn't make any sense you know so it comes out that you know jamil is not feeling safe you know hiding information in a healing process is not conducive and so this leaves jamil just not feeling safe even more with mark and mark you know holds her close and won't let her go and um and it's interesting because not being honest is literally what brought them to the show to ask for this help to begin with but they're continuing this uh, toxic cycle of being uh, you know dishonest by omitting information that would help them in the healing process it's just madness you know at some point in speaking with jamil iana says you know take off your rings and hold them in her hands iana holds the rings jamil's rings in her hands and says what do they represent when they are off and jamil says they represent that she doesn't really want to be in the marriage anymore and you know yeah nice to say listen i have been clear that i'm not advocating for you to divorce or to to leave your marriage but uh, but i'm advocating that you tell the truth about what it is that you feel about your marriage and that you honor yourself and that you honor your marriage by bringing the truth to it and if you no longer want to be in your marriage honor the person that you're in a relationship with by telling them the truth because you're not you're not doing them any favors by not telling them the truth at the end of the episode the family is all there but they didn't get around to the grandmother's um gripe they didn't get around to the whatever the grandmother came to the show for with the family so you know Ian is kind of apologizing for that that oh my goodness we've been so busy with this dynamic that we didn't really get to you um but in that um in that moment with the family of the you know they they read these letters that they wrote to their dad so that the dad is um aware but the youngest daughter um requests to ask grandmother to ask grandmother something so the grandmother is brought in and the, this is when now Iana does the apology say oh we've been so busy and just working and we didn't get to your start to to you um, and it's been two or three days already but they haven't gotten to her so brings the grand grandmother in and Jaden the youngest daughter who's about 18 I think teenager um says wants to know why grandmother doesn't like her and why she talks about her mother Jamel in front of her and this grandmother I think this is Mark's father I mean Mark's mother this is their um, 
paternal grandmother because it kind of looks like it's the, the grandmother. So the, the Jamel, the, the mother, wi wife to Mark is like, wait a minute, so, and Yana's like, hold on. And says to this young girl, that's not even about you. That's about your grandmother. And leave that with her. You don't have to know why she doesn't like you. Leave it with her because I don't see how, as old as I am, I would fix my mouth to tell my grand granddaughters that I don't need I don't like them because the response to the question by the grandmother to this child is that yeah I don't like you you know and the ch and and this this teenager is like but I just make it make sense to me why don't you like me what have I done to you that you don't like me and Yana this is where Yana is like cut that has nothing to do with you cut that has nothing to do with you why she doesn't like you I don't see how as a grandmother I would fix my mouth to say to any of my grandchildren I don't like you for what you know and even if there were the reasons like you are an elder you you don't you don't get to go around telling people you don't like them uh, especially young people what are you modeling and how will you be respected in your position as an elder if you think you can go around um, in immaturity and say whatever it is that you want to say to young people that are acting out because they're young and they don't know any better really get it together that is the to be continued end of this two-part episode i guess there's more parts coming i would say probably one more part coming but it has it was interesting you know it's interesting for me i think what i got out of this is that whole notion of somebody controlling an entire family and just having everybody under their thumb because they're the breadwinner and bringing into their family dynamic their own brokenness and projecting their brokenness and therefore because they're not healed because they've not forgiven their past and they've not healed from their past and so that carries over into the children and the children um, take it on and they just trickle it through themselves and through to the next generations that they're going to bear themselves unless somebody stands up and to stand uh, to break the pattern and to interrupt the pattern and pivot into something completely different that is more functional um, that is more useful you know conducive for everybody's well-being um, and I would say some of us have experienced with the whole being controlled by somebody, you know, for money and feeling like you don't have, you cannot call into account a person's bad behavior because, you know, they're the hand that sees you or there's somebody that you need at a certain point in your life. And it's, it's really when I took my power back and I decided I would rather go without. I would rather go without eating, I would rather go without shelter, I would rather go without food, you know, without clothes, and I would rather go without than be controlled and be held uh, hostage to, well, you cannot hold me accountable to my bad behavior because I'm the hand that sees you. When I got to the point where I said I would rather go without, the whole situation changed. And obviously, once I forgave and I released the whole situation, I got my power back and I was able to heal and move on and and move to a different place, whether I have plenty or whether I don't, where I'm at peace, I'm at peace. And I'm not looking for yet some, another surrogate to um, overbear and to over me and to abuse me in, you know, helping me out financially or one time at the one time helping me where I needed something absolutely not I'm free whether people buy from my business or not I'm free whether people help me when I'm in financial crisis or not I'm free because I will not allow myself to be subjected to being abused and not holding people accountable for their bad behavior because ugh, I might get some money from you. No, God is my provider. Thanks. You know. Anyway, I've said a mouthful. I cannot believe where I got the strength to gather and do this particular review today. But I'm so glad that I did it. And I will see you again next time. Thank you for continuing to watch. I absolutely, absolutely appreciate you. Please like, please share. Um, and...
comment down below. Let's talk. Let's have a big powwow over this um, uh, episode and tell me what your thoughts are and what your perspectives are. And let's talk. Um, thank you so much again for watching. I'll see you again next time. Bye.